Good morning. My name is Jackie, and I will be your conference operator today. At this time, I'd like to welcome everyone to the CA APM Wiley Global User Community webcast. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question during this time, simply press star, then the number 1 on your telephone keypad. If you would like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you. Mr. Davis, you may begin your conference. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us on our uh, first of two sessions today for the uh, November uh, APM webcast. Uh, we just have a couple quick announcements uh, this morning, uh, today, uh, that we need to uh, address with everyone on the uh, community. First of all is that um, uh, I have joined CA as, uh, as an employee now, so um, as a result, uh, we'd like to uh, open up again um, uh, the board nominations. Uh, we're looking for at least uh, two new members. If you're, uh, if you're interested in, in joining the uh, APM board, uh, please uh, forward your information to Mary Greening. Her uh, email address is mary.greening, that's G-R-E-E-N-I-N-G at C-A dot com. Uh, also, um, we will not have a webcast in December, and uh, so we will have an, our next webcast is scheduled for January 17th, uh, 2013, and uh, check the message boards for uh, topics and details as, they, uh, as we get into that time. Now, today's topic is uh, CA Cloud Monitor Update and a look ahead to real, time, real Browser Transaction Monitoring. Today's speakers will be Steve Bounce, and Director of Product Management, and Paul Ellis, Senior Pro uh, Principal Product Marketing Manager from CA, uh, who will be presenting. So I will turn this over to Paul. Okay, thanks very much, and uh, thanks to the uh, community for giving us the opportunity to spend some time with you today to talk about APM Cloud Monitor. I'm going to take just a few minutes to kind of do a brief introduction, give you some background if you're not familiar with APM Cloud Monitor, and then turn it over to Steve so that uh, he can take you through some of the details. So this is just uh, a real quick run through of what we'll talk about, the overview and background that I just mentioned. We'll talk a little bit about uh, you know, what's on the radar uh, in, in the road ahead. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the solution itself. We'll take questions and answers. Uh, you can either use the live meeting facility to submit questions at any time. We will allow some time at the end of the session to uh, take live Q&A from the phone. So with that, uh, let me just jump in very quickly to sort of positioning um, CA APM Cloud Monitor in the overall CA APM solution. So I, I kind of think of APM as having sort of a, a three-leg stool, if you will. So what you see on the slide in blue is what I would consider you know, core APM. And that essentially is what most of you are probably familiar with. It's the, the root cause analysis. It's the end user experience. It's the infrastructure where application pieces of the application performance management from CA. Then the second leg is the cross-enterprise solution that we have in the portfolio that consists of either APM on the mainframe or APM uh, cross-enterprise from distributed to mainframe that allows the two of those to cooperatively work together in terms of solving problems. And then finally, what today's webcast is all about is APM Cloud Monitor, the first of the SaaS-based solutions that we're bringing to the market space. Just a little bit of background in the event that you're not familiar uh, with APM Cloud Monitor. Essentially, it came to CA Technologies uh, as an acquisition last year, uh, known in the market space as WatchMouse, so you'll still hear some of that terminology around, and I think as all of us know from, from Interscope, the, the old names seem to, uh, to hang in there for a long time. So we rebranded it APM Cloud Monitor, and essentially what it is, is it's a SaaS-based solution that runs outside the firewall from various points of presence around the world, 60 as a matter of fact, and does a number of things, you know, one of which is it gives you the outside in view to what's going on with the application and the network performance. It solves that dreaded 3 a.m. problem where nobody's using the application, and when you come in at 8 o'clock in the morning to open up shop and to start work, 
that's when you find out that the application's down. So using a solution like APM Cloud Monitor allows you to continue to access the application through the monitoring stations when nobody else is there. And then obviously the fact that we have that number of monitoring stations, you can use that as another mechanism to help isolate uh, regional problems. So you may have a problem with a particular carrier and you can use APM Cloud Monitor to, uh, to help spot that. You know, as I already mentioned, it is SaaS, which makes it really easy and completely painless to deploy. I mean, you literally uh, can install and have this running in, in a matter of minutes almost. And we'll talk about that a little bit more at the end of the, uh, the presentation. So uh, essentially, some of the highlights that we want to make sure that we cover today, in addition to talking about the solution, is some of the major enhancements, sort of what's new with APM Cloud Monitor, uh, one of which is, if you're familiar with the announcement of APM 9.1, the integration with APM Core technology, if you will, uh, mobile browser support, and then continuing to expand our points of presence around the globe. So those are some of the things that, uh, that we'll highlight as being new in the solution. So with that, I'm going to turn the webcast over to Steve Valentine, who's Director of Product Management for APM Cloud Monitor. Steve, it's all yours. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. Um, there are a number of uh, capabilities we've designed in a cloud monitor to deliver synthetic monitoring capabilities. Um, I'll touch on them here on this slide, and some of these will go to uh, a little more depth in later on in the presentation. Um, web transaction monitoring, we deliver an ability to uh, record scripts. Uh, at the protocol level uh, through what we call a basic monitor. Uh, it, it winds up being, a, uh, in essence, a, a pinging of a, of a URL, in essence. Um, Multi-step, multi-location uh, transaction monitoring as well through a record uh, capability. That's uh, a transaction recorder, a CA transaction recorder that we're using called Bad Boy. Uh, real browser monitoring, it's in essence a, a single step monitor uh, of, a, of a web page <clears throat> which loads all the components that go into delivering a web page experience. Uh, the, the document object model is uh, commonly, uh, commonly known in the, in, in the industry and it's, it's that um, it's, it's visibility into how the DOM is built, all the different elements, uh, all the different objects that go into loading a web page is what we return visibility to <clears throat> and the performance of each of those JPEGs, HTML files uh, in, a, in a waterfall chart. We'll touch on that more later. So we capture the full render time of, of web pages with, with real user browser monitoring. Uh, touched on the protocols uh, here, it's actually network protocols. It's beyond just web transaction monitoring, kind of HTTP stuff. We also then have a number of other protocols, uh, 20 plus, and we're adding them um, quarter to quarter. Um, other protocols we also can, can monitor the availability and performance of. A handful of them are listed here. We have a rather extensive API as well. It's a REST API, kicks out information either JSON or, or XML. Um, and that can be used to, <clears throat> to access uh, all the functionality within the Cloud Monitor solution. Um, we've got a series of dashboards, reports, and root cause analysis capability that we've be built on top of all this data we're collecting. Public status pages uh, provide an ability to uh, display um, how a service is performing to using customers. We'll talk more about public status pages later, but it's a uh, it's it's basically a it's a it's a posting of status of your most important web web services and web properties. So uh, at a glance, you can see how they're performing, and this is a, this is a public page that is published out in a community-type fashion to your interested users. <clears throat> and 
And then finally, alerts and notifications. We have a, a whole raft of capabilities uh, around how you can be notified, uh, flexible uh, settings on, uh, on how those occur and, and, and when. So I have control here. Jackie, trying to advance the, uh, the page. There we go. Thank you. <clears throat> um, as mentioned, uh, I'll go a little bit more in depth here the, and the capabilities. Uh, we've got two types of monitors, basic and advanced. Uh, the basic monitors, uh, we've got um, HTTP monitors, protocol monitors, uh, any kind of uh, simple availability uh, URL-based um, uh, monitoring capability, we, we can we can deliver at the protocol level. There's also uh, basic browser monitors, <clears throat> which is what I just mentioned as well. Real RBNs, real browser monitors, which return visibility to, to how one page loads based on how the document objects, the objects of the page, load. We also have uh, script monitors. Again, we use the Bad Boy Recorder to, to record those scripts. It's a very simple recording mechanism. Um, clicks, you know, click a start button to, to record, walk through your transaction, hit a stop button, you save that script off, and you can upload that uh, into, into Cloud Monitor and use that script to run uh, synthetic transactions. JMeter is the uh, recording mechanism um, that provides us a little more depth. Um, there's, there's two mechanisms we use for recording. It's, it's Bad Boy uh, and then and, and JMeter as well. And I'll touch on those in a little more depth later on in the presentation. Scripting with the Cloud Monitor API, uh, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a rather extensive API. Uh, you can uh, access it to, to log into your account, uh, get statistics from, from all the monitoring stations, all your monitoring rules you have set up and uh, log out of your account, return that data to where, to where you want it to. Uh, the reports, very flexible. The PSPs I, I touched on, those are highly customizable um, with your own look and feel, um, your own web services areas to post messages and updates even <clears throat> out to your users, uh, and then custom reports, uh, various delivery methods. Um, Performance dashboards and then integration with a PM91, uh, where we uh, bring in synthetic monitoring results from Cloud Monitor into uh, APM dashboards, and we'll touch on that later on as well. Next slide. So a bit more about monitors. Uh, they're very easy to set up. Um, the, uh, the once once you subscribe to the service um, in your monitoring dashboard, you are given uh, view to the uh, monitors that are available to you. It's very much a uh, a click and configure kind of arrangement. Um, here is a is a view of what that monitoring dashboard would look like after you've set up a handful of them. If you look closely here, you can see where there's a number of, of monitors that, that have been set up. You can see a browser monitor that's been set up. Uh, there's an FTP, HTTP, HTTP monitor. Uh, those, are, those are some of our, our basic monitors. Uh, the very last one there is a script monitor, and that represents a script that was recorded and uploaded uh, to, the, to the service. Um, there, uh, the, the, at probably the next, the next slide, I think we've got a view possibly of where you can uh, set this up, if I recall right. <clears throat> um, no, back me up. It's not, it's not what I thought it was going to be. So just real quickly before I, I leave from here, um, once you set up all your monitors, this is where you go to, to administer them. You can see there's a, there's a status. You can, you can view them, and you can uh, actually take further actions to, to make them uh, active or, or inactive. But from this view, you can actually access all the monitors you've set up, uh, drill down to reports and even root cause analysis from that view, uh, from that view column. Those icons are allow you to, to drill into each of those monitors and see how they're performing. Um, if you see that status column, 
uh, once alerted to an error. For instance, you can go from this view and drill into those mo any, any given monitor to, to begin uh, triaging what the issues may be at hand. So next slide. Now, once you've done that, uh, this is a real browser monitor view. Uh, once you've done that uh, and you say you've seen an error, you can actually drill into a real browser monitor and you'll get, uh, you'll get a waterfall chart. This is what I was speaking of earlier here uh, about, the, about the DOM, the document object model, and uh, bringing visibility to each of these objects as they're loaded on the web page. Um, and it provides you the, the timing of each of those elements, and you can actually see which one is taking the longest to load um, or where errors may be occurring. The, uh, the button that is circled up there uh, allows you to access the log files and gets into very specific information uh, about which point of presence around the globe may be the one affecting. In this case, it's Auckland, New Zealand. And the area below, you'll notice, are, are thumbnail sketches. Uh, once an error is detected, um, it begins capturing information and returning these thumbnail sketches of the actual web page uh, and where the er error occurs. You can also have a visual. Next slide. <coughs> Scripting, um, the, the basic monitors I mentioned are, are, are in essence uh, single step monitors, uh, single step uh, you know, URL protocol level uh, availability monitors or real browser uh, single step monitors. The, the advanced monitors we provide, uh, again, are delivered by a recording mechanism. Those are multi-step transactions through a website. Um, and it's, it, it allows you to, uh, to record uh, all, your, all your normal interactions, uh, save that as a script. Um, part of, the, uh, part of the, the, the details you can include in that script include assertions uh, where you can identify keywords, key phrases uh, that you want to ensure appear in your, in your script. Save those at the, at the script level, and then the, when the script replays, it will look for those words. If it doesn't see those words, it throws an error. If it sees the, the words or phrases that you, that you know need to be there, it, it, uh, it returns successfully. Next slide. <clears throat> the two scripting tools we, we use are JMeter and Bad Boy. JMeter, as most of you may know, is a, it's a platform independent. Uh, open source uh, uh, transaction recording engine. Um, it really is best for lower level API testing and web services uh, testing. Um, the, the bad boy recorder uh, we've, we've developed is, is actually designed more for business analysts, not as much for developers. We're, we're promoting ease of use with this transaction recorder. Um, it will directly uh, upload into Cloud Monitor or export to JMeter, uh, and oftentimes you find, uh, yes, the Bad Boy Recorder provides a very good entry-level, easy-to-use recorder for scripts, but for some that are a little more complicated, uh, they need to be exported to JMeter, and in JMeter, there's a lot of, a lot of power there that you can uh, massage and configure the scripts a little bit further, and uh, we provide for that capability as well. Next slide. <coughs> the uh, API. One of the one of the one of the key capabilities of the solution, the the, the company we acquired, WatchMouse, the, the team there had uh, exposed almost every I think 95 percent of the capabilities are exposed via API, so it's very extensive. Um, any ability to set up, activate, modify, um, or, or remove site monitoring rules. You can schedule scans, uh, trace routes, um, site checks via this API. And as I mentioned earlier, it's a, it's a full RESTful API, and it kicks out the output, not a JSON or XML, and we provide it freely available here at this, uh, at this link. Next slide. PSPs. Um, mentioned this a few times earlier. So here's a, here's a view as to how one of these will look. Um, we've got a number of, uh, of large customers using these today. There's a couple of examples there at the bottom. Uh, later on, if you have time, you can kind of go check them out to see how they're being used. Um, but uh, it is very customizable, uh, 
customers can put their own look and feel, their own logos on it. Uh, as I alluded to earlier, it provides customers, in essence, your customers, um, either from in, an internal IT perspective or your external um, revenue-generating customer with visibility into how you're delivering your services uh, from, from around the globe. The, the, the value prop there uh, is one of reducing support calls and costs. You can imagine, and you've seen them, we've all seen them when, when there's been major outages, uh, the ability to rapidly communicate the, the status of the service uh, reduces not only kind of bad will in the, in the blogosphere, but also keeps, uh, keeps, your, keeps your customers uh, informed that you're, you're on top of things and, and know what you're doing. Next slide. <clears throat> Just a quick note on custom reports. Uh, as you might expect, uh, you know, daily, weekly, monthly, uh, they can be automatically sent. Um, via email or certainly brought up via the console, a couple of ways to export them. Um, we save the, we save the raw data, uh, actually for, for now it's, uh, three quarters. And then beyond that, we, uh, we run some scripts to pull that data out, compress it, and keep it available for up to one year. Some of the deeper dive root cause analysis stuff, uh, we have immediate access to for the past 48 hours. Next slide. There we go. Um, another uh, very powerful feature uh, is our, our current status tab, where you can create a custom dashboard of graphs and tables. Um, if you look closely here, you can you can see there's an add button, there's an expand all and collapse all. Um, if you click on that add button, there's a whole host of uh, uh, dashboard types that you can select on all the various metrics you can imagine, uh, response time, um, resolution time, um, I any, uh, gosh, I, I, I think we have a list actually. We do have a list. I think the last two slides here have a list of all the metrics uh, that you can access. Um, that'll be part of the Prezo you can, you can uh, refer to. But the point of this slide here is that you can, through a, 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 a click mechanism, you can actually select those and pull those up into a, an interactive live dashboard here. And here you see a view of only six. But this thing can, can take a views of up to, to nine, 12 different dashboards on this page that can all be customized uh, based, uh, based on, on, on adding all the, all the different uh, metrics that we, that we capture and make available to you guys. So the, the, the current status dashboard, is a, it's a very, very powerful tab to customize the views that are important to you, the performance metrics that are important to you and your organization. Next slide. <clears throat> um, there's a, a handful of, uh, of, of recent deliveries to the product I want to bring to your attention here. Uh, next slide. Um, as Paul mentioned at the, at the outset, we've got a, a global network of 60 plus points of presence or POPs. Um, we, uh, we target a certain number to add, uh, every year, actually per quarter. Um, it, it's three that we're, three per quarter that we, we aim to add. We've got five new ones that we've added and wanted to, uh, bring those to your attention. In India, we've added three, Canada, uh, and, uh, and Chicago. Uh, up, prior, up prioritized for, for next delivery are, are POPs in Australia, South Africa, uh, South America, and then uh, a handful more in North America. But we, uh, we we stand these up about three per quarter, and it's important to us to grow this global monitoring network. Uh, our goal is to get somewhere north of 100 um, here, uh, here within the next year. Next slide. The integration with APM uh, on-premise APM has been has been mentioned. Uh, this is going to be a multi-phased um, uh, uh, work effort. The first uh, effort is already productized in APM 9.1, uh, and what it's doing it's using the cloud monitor uh, API to pull a handful of, of key metrics, and they're they're listed here. Um, pulls those metrics into um, in, into the APM dashboard. Uh, a cloud monitor tab has been, been created to collect those metrics 
and bringing those in for viewing um, along with some of the real-time transactions that APM already, already tracks. Going forward, uh, at a later time, maybe we can talk roadmap on one of these sessions. Going forward, we intend to, to tighten the integration and the linkage between our synthetic and our real-time performance monitoring capabilities. Next slide. <clears throat> Mobile browser monitoring, this is another uh, multi-phased initiative for us. Uh, mobile uh, application performance monitoring is going to be a, a major focus for us uh, in FY14 or this next calendar year. Uh, here, uh, what we've delivered is an ability to replay transactions through a various number of mobile browsers. They're listed for you here. Um, and as, as you all know, each mobile browser uh, returns and renders web pages slightly differently in some cases and, and even uh, more than slightly differently uh, in other occasions. So this allows you to fine-tune uh, your ability based on the OSs and the web browsers you use uh, to, to gauge mobile, mobile browser performance. Next slide. Um, one of our, our next major releases is real browser transaction monitoring. And I might mention, uh, in addition to uh, the mobile browsing for next calendar year, I mentioned there's another major feature uh, uh, that we're working on currently, which is on-premise points of presence or synthetic monitoring behind the firewall. So as I, as I see RBTM here uh, and think about talking to you guys about, about this capability, uh, I quickly think of on-premise points of presence as really the two major features we intend to deliver uh, next calendar year and for you guys to stay tuned for, for more information on both of these. The first one up is RBTM. Uh, we're on track to deliver this, if not by end of this calendar year, probably by, by end of the month in January. We've got end of sprint demos occurring right now, and the team is, is heads down uh, delivering this capability. Um, <clears throat> And in essence, what it is, uh, it provides – a way to think about it is it's a combination of the real browser monitoring that we've just briefly talked about, that ability to reach, return performance visibility of all the objects of a, of a web page, the DOM model, if you will, uh, and combining that single-page view with multi-stepped transaction recording capabilities. So we're combining both our, our RBM – and our transaction scripting capabilities into, into one monitor called a real browser transaction monitoring. Um, it's not introducing a new recorder. We're still basing this off of our CA transaction recorder, Bad Boy. It's basically going to act like a, a plug-in to our, our current capabilities. Um, and, and in essence, what it does, it, it allows uh, users to, to navigate browser UIs, record actions on the UI, uh, and provide playback as UI actions. Um, we uh, are designing a continued ability to, to make it easy for users to, to record this interaction, to save it as a script. This gets sent to the cloud monitor service, and then it, it is run and, and replayed as a monitor uh, back on, on the, 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 the targeted websites. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> So the, 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 the point, uh, the, I guess the point to it is it's providing, uh, I guess, UI level at the browser level interactions and recording those click-by-click -click transactions and ability to replay that as, as real UI actions. Um, so br just briefly on how it's, how it's going to work, um, you'll, you'll, there'll be a, uh, uh, a download of the cloud, cloud monitor transaction recorder just as today. It's the bad boy transaction recorder. Navigate to the website. Uh, there'll be a button that you that you select to start recording. Uh, then you'll record a transaction script by simply browsing as you normally would on your website. You're going to go through your key actions that you want to monitor on that site. And when the, the browsing session uh, a particular is finished, uh, there's a button provided to stop recording. You click that. The session is automatically saved as a transaction script and through the Cloud Monitor dashboard. Um, next slide. <clears throat> and you see that mentioned there that we're also mentioning here on this slide, the present. That's, that's going to be a, we're improving the intelligence of the monitoring stations in our global network, our, our POPs. And each POP now will be a quote-unquote smart POP. 
uh, and what what each pop will be uh, designed to do is uh, receive the scripts and queue them up to be run, run the scripts, drive a real instance of a real browser using the real OSs, uh, drive that script, um, and then uh, save that save that script, save the results of that script, and send it then back to after the execution of the script, send it then back to the the main monitoring service. So each pop maintains a queue of scripts, um, and when it's executed, it returns it back to the to the main monitoring service for uh, presentation and interpretation. So the results are taken out of the queue and delivered back to the cloud monitor dashboards. Um, one thing I also want to underscore here is that we're we're uh, introducing a translation service um, so that uh, we can uh, we can use a, a format called WebDriver. As most of you may know, WebDriver is a very common uh, format for transaction scripts that most other recording capabilities use. Uh, it's rather it's an open format, and by us translating to a WebDriver format, it, it allows increased interoperability not only to to other potential recorders on the market, but also CA's own recorders. For instance, uh, Le uh, ITKO's Lisa recorder down the road, our own CEM recorder. If any recorder can export to a WebDriver format, we can take that and run that uh, script in in, uh, in Cloud Monitor. So it's a very powerful capability that we're going to be delivering uh, with RBTM in that regard. Next slide. <clears throat> that I guess that's it. That that wraps it up. Any questions about some of the things I touched on here? If you'd like to ask an audio question, please press star then the number one on your telephone keypad. If you have no questions. Okay. Oh, well, I guess it's back over to you. Okay. Uh, certainly uh, we'll be a few more minutes, so if anybody does have a question, feel free to uh, to jump in there either online or via the telephone. So just a couple of things that we want to point out here as we wrap things up. Uh, there is a uh, community site set up for APM Cloud Monitor. So if you go to the global community website, look at, uh, look at the various message boards, you'll find one for APM Cloud Monitor. It's a general discussion board. Uh, please use that, and you know it's it's a good way to share information amongst yourselves as well as get feedback into the product management, and product marketing teams. That information that you post there does go directly to the product management team. So I would encourage you to take a look at that and use it. I would also encourage you, if you haven't already done so, to you know take a test drive. Uh, you can go to the website uh, that you see here. To this URL, you can download a free copy that you can run for 30 days. It'll give you a, a sense for the experience that, that you'll have. It certainly will give you a sense for how easy it is to install and deploy. So, you know, like many things, there's, you know, there's nothing like uh, trying uh, to and using it and actually putting it through its paces to figure out uh, what value it might bring to your particular organization. So uh, it does look like we may have a question or two online, uh, but I can't. Mary, can you see any of the online questions? It looks like we have a queue. Uh, yes, you just click on the word manage. Yeah, okay. So, Steve, a couple of questions here. Let me, let me toss them out. Um, one of them is uh, how do you describe the security of your system? Um. So the, okay, so I'm, uh, I have to expand it so we can see the whole thing. So how do you uh, describe the security of your system so that no one can hack into it and learn from it about a customer? Yeah, well, uh, everything uh, is is encrypted over SSL um, at, at a certain level. Um, I, I'd have to get more information back to the community here on some of the specific details. I don't have them at my fingertips, um, but I will tell you that uh, it's been designed to, to to be as robust as possible, given the fact that it is beyond the firewall. Uh, so let me let me get a I've got, there's actually a doc got prepared, Paul, on that that talks about security. Let me just get that sent out to the community. Okay, that would be great. Uh, yeah. I have another question, and that is: Is real browser transaction monitoring 
plan to be integrated into APM Interscope and APM Cloud Monitor. And I think you've already answered that relative to Cloud Monitor. Yeah, um, uh, the, the real browser transaction monitoring will be integrated into Cloud Monitor. What you'll find, if you're familiar with the tool currently, there'll be an extra, an extra tab. Today, when you go to the solution, there's a, there's a tab for basic monitors, and you're shown how many you have available in your subscription to use. There's a tab for advanced monitors, and you're shown how many you have available to use there. There'll now be another tab for real browser transaction monitoring uh, integrated right into that that uh, record, the, in, into the UI um, for for access for uh, Interscope or, or APM. Uh, there there are no current plans to have that level of integration uh, in Interscope. Um, I alluded to down the road, us moving to a common recording format, uh, which will begin to get us to a common recorder. But at this stage, uh, we, we won't be doing that just yet. Okay. I have two questions about licensing, and so I'll just, I'll just put them together. Uh, one is, uh, what is the licensing model that we use for APM Cloud Monitor, and what is the licensing pricing? So let's just roll those into one question. Sure. Um, the licensing model, it's, uh, it's as Paul mentioned, uh, it is a 100% SaaS-based subscription service. So uh, it's, it's uh, regularly recurring monthly payments. Uh, it's, it's packaged up by uh, different levels of monitor capabilities. Uh, in the session I touched on, basic monitors and advanced monitors. Those are the, the core key capabilities of our solution. And what we do is we bundle up various amounts of basic and advanced monitors and put them in these packages, ranging from a, a small package uh, multi, called the multi-site package. I think it's like $99 a month, all the way up to an advanced package, which is, uh, I think, $8,000 a month. So we run the gamut um, based on your needs and your appetite. Uh, you can take down any of those packages uh, and get varying amounts of, of monitors, transaction monitors. Of course, just, uh, I'll just add along with that comes in, in each package some of the other capabilities I mentioned in the session today. Uh, you know that re that will return just a tremendous amount of data and then uh, offering custom reports, offering API access. There are different levels of that. Uh, alerts and notifications, those all are included in part of these packages. So these are, these are bundles of capabilities kind of wrapped around um, our advanced and basic monitoring capabilities that are, that are put into these packages. Let's see. It uh, doesn't look like we have any more questions online. How about uh, from the phones? Jackie, you, do we have any other questions on, uh, on the phone line? You do have a question from the line of Stephen Guthrie. Hey, Steve. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Steve, how are you? Good, good. Uh, nice stuff. It's really encouraging to see us advancing uh, this technology. I just wanted to check my notes. So the Integration between Cloud Monitor and 9.1 is now uh, productized. The yes. mobile browser or the RBTM, you're looking at early calendar 2013, if not by the end of the year? Yes, sir. Yep, that's right. And then the mobile browser sometime next year? Well, the, the mobile browsing, uh, Steve, that, that I covered in the session today, that is in the product now the ability to, to emulate various mobile browser types uh, popped up a screenshot and kind of showed what's in the product now. So that's there. Um, going forward uh, in next calendar year, and again, a roadmap session would, would probably be helpful to the community here, we do plan on adding another, another, uh, another leg to that strategy, if you will, and that's emulating the traffic, the mobile traffic itself. Because emulating browsers only brings you one piece. Um, emulating the, the traffic uh, is another piece, so we're, we're, we're planning to deliver an ability to do that so you can get really a, 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 good, uh, a good view of what the performance would be of a, of a mobile transaction. So that's coming later. But right now, we've got, we've got basic mobile application monitoring in the product. 
Awesome. And also, be, yeah, and to be clear, this is this is mobile web monitoring, not mobile native. And mobile native is a whole separate issue that we can talk about with an inner, inner roadmap session. Okay, gotcha. Awesome. Yeah, good. Uh, that cleared it up. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Your next question, consume line of Jaya Ready. Hi, um, uh, I was just wondering, like, if you if you can uh, set up a blackout period for the monitoring for the monitors. Yes, uh, there uh, there is a, an area of the configuration UI where you can very easily, with a kind of a click of a mouse, select uh, maintenance windows uh, so that those time periods don't count count against your SLAs. Okay, cool. Thank you. Uh huh. Your next question comes from the line of Aaron Ritter. Hi. Um, Hi, Aaron. Just uh, with regards to uh, a follow-up question to the thing about internally response time uh, monitoring from the browser. So I actually misunderstood the topic first uh, a little bit. I thought it is related to Cloud Monitor. I wasn't sure. So for me, that's more a bit of an em emulation instead of a, a real browser. Because for at least from from our perspective, the real browser is the browser of the customer. That, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, what, with what what we've called it. Well, when we acquired the company, what they were calling it was RBM or real browser monitoring. But you're right; it's actually emulating browsers. What we're doing with RBTM, that will be real browsers. So. Um, Will you, um, for example, introduce uh, JavaScript hookups or HX uh, type hookups into websites? Or, I mean, yeah. Um, well, okay. maybe, maybe, so, maybe, maybe, well, let me be clear real, 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 real quickly on that topic. Uh, uh, so, RBTM will provide visibility into into how JavaScript executes on the web pages. Pop-up window and lazy loading techniques, if you will. It will it will return visibility into that content on load will include an entire uh, uh, time frame as to how long it took JavaScript to inject. I mean JavaScript to execute. JavaScript injection. If you're looking at kind of real user monitoring from a JavaScript injection point of view, that's a whole different beast, and that's not what we're doing. Okay, so you basically use the browser simulator to do full-blown HX web calls where you not only measure uh, the different HTTP requests, but you are as well able to measure what's the whole HX JavaScript, et cetera, doing in the browser later on with all its load. That, uh, yeah, that's correct. Right? Yeah, that, that's okay. correct. But, but, but even there, 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 there's a couple of phases there. Um, as we get into delivering the functionality, probably our first release, uh, we'll, we'll deliver visibility to JavaScript execution in, the, in more the aggregate. When you get into delivering exactly what happens within a JavaScript executed object, that will probably come down in a later release. That probably won't be in the first release. There's more work we have to do to okay. get that level of granularity. Okay. Uh, and yeah. now the last yeah. question for the internal uh, monitoring. Um, do, you, do you actually think there will be another product? Because other companies have, well, for example, injection on the uh, web server side where they uh, uh, enhance website with or enhance the, um, the website the customer is getting with, with some additional measurement tools or some right. other things like that. Do you think that there is internally coming something like that or, um, I mean, obviously you said there is no plans currently. Was there thoughts about introducing that into the via Interscope alone for internal monitoring, as well as uh, monitoring the internal yeah. estate? Yes, yes. Let me clarify a few a few things from 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 the CA perspective. What we're what we're doing there. Um, so from a from a cloud monitor synthetic transaction monitoring capability, we we don't have plans to introduce JavaScript injection or or ROM. However, from the APM side of the house. From, from, from the Interscope side of the house where they do do real transaction monitoring, they in fact do have JSI already available. Uh, it was released also in ATM 9.1. Uh, customers need to request um, assistance to get, it, to get it enabled, but it is productized in ATM 9.1 the ability to, to instrument for, for JavaScript injection on the web page. 
And that, and, and from the APM product is where some of that real user monitoring based on JSI will be occurring. Our focus right now for cloud monitor, that? it's all synthetic. I'm sorry? Uh, what do you call that product? So I don't think um, you used. Yeah, and, and this might not help with your confusion. Uh, actually, they call that BRPM, um, Browser Response Time Monitoring. Uh, not to be confused with what we just talked about here, which is RBT. <laughs> so okay. forgive our acronyms. <laughs> um, but that is called that's called BRTM, and that's coming out of out of out of Interscope and the APM product. RBTM uh, is coming out of the Cloud Monitor product. Uh, you know, due probably no later than January. So there's so there's that that angle. Um, so yeah, again, uh, just to, just to underscore, we're going to be pursuing synthetic monitoring to its to its fullest as we can through our roadmap to to improve our synthetic monitoring analysis and reporting. And from the APM side, they're going to be pursuing more the real time visibility. And then we're going to integrate, uh, deliver a bridge between the two to bring some really intelligent integrations for kind of synthetic to real in context integration. That being said, I want to touch on the other thing you mentioned, behind the firewall monitoring. Um, I mentioned it as well in my session here. One of our two major features for this next calendar year, I mentioned RBTM, which we talked about, and then on-premise uh, points of presence, um, which is synthetic monitoring behind the firewall. Uh, and we also uh, will be pursuing that with, with Cloud Monitor in, in the next calendar year. So that, that's coming as well. That is on the roadmap. Thank you. Uh-huh. Matt, this time you have no further audio questions. Okay. Looks like we have one other question online, Steve, and, and you may want to take this one uh, offline. But it's a question about uh, whether or not uh, Cloud Monitor can be uh, uh, white-labeled for service providers, resellers, partners, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I can, can, can take it uh, offline extensively, certainly, but the, the, the short answer is yes. Uh, we actually uh, have recently uh, made some mods to the product that whoever the, the, the questioner is, if they want to contact me directly, uh, I can chat with them about uh, to enable Cloud Monitor to, to be used in MSP environment to include, uh, to include white labeling. Okay, awesome. Okay, uh, one thing I, I do, do want to add to uh, the question about licensing uh, if you go to the APM Cloud Monitor website and click through to the solution itself, you'll see that uh, the various plans that Steve mentioned are all listed in terms of, uh, you know, enterprise and intermediate options and that sort of thing. And if you click on the, the Learn More link next to each one of those, uh, you'll get an exploded view of the number of uh, five-minute monitors, number of one-minute monitors, uh, reporting and, and the capabilities that you get with each one of those packages. It doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't show all the pricing, but it gives you a perspective for the scope of the various levels of packages that you can get with APM Cloud Monitor. So, uh, Jackie, if we don't have any more questions from the phone lines, I don't see any more questions online. Uh, I'll give people another 30 seconds to decide whether or not uh, there's anything else they want to ask, and appreciate you filling out the poll to uh, rate us in terms of uh, the usefulness of this particular session. It looks like you're doing that Oh, wow. Now. Oh, so, look at this. This is like real-time pleasure or real-time pain. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so, okay, uh, with that, I think this brings to a close our session today. Obviously, as you know, as I mentioned, if you have any questions, you can reach us either via phone or email or use the community board. And thank you all once again.